So, welcome to this session. Well, first talk by um, by Nadia. She talked about Erlang on bare metal hardware, so running Erlang just on pure hardware without kernel, without safety net, without whatever. But you will tell us more. Thank you. Yeah. Um, hi, guys. Um, first of all, I'm Nadia. Nice meeting you. And second, if you were checking the program before, there was a Initially, another guy should be presented, but he couldn't make it, so I'm a replacement here. And I will give you perspective, not from the producer of the Grace board, but from potential user. And uh, I had about a month to play with that board and to see how it behaves, like what can you do and so on. And before I start, I would like to see who is in the audience. Um, who has ever tried working something, doing something with Arduino? Cool. And Raspberry Pi. Nice. Awesome. <laughs> so yeah, now there is an alternative. And um, looks like that. Um, and yeah, you, you can basically, uh, what it is good about, I will tell in details a bit later. And uh, generally, I will speak about hardware. What is there? Components, software. I will do a short demo. Uh, showing how cool you can actually interact with this board and then I will uh, say what guys have in mind for the future. So, let's do specs first. Um, the board itself has embedded wireless device. It runs real airline on real bare metal. It has Lots of connectors for sensors and equators, and extra. Um, it has Wi-Fi, micro SD, um, quite some RAM, and pretty good processor, I would say. So it has uh, LEDs and switches. It has several ports as GPIO, UART, and two SPI ports, one and two. Um, it has a I to C connector and I do <coughs> need my notes. Yes, um, so it implements a uh, master slave protocol, right? One, uh, so two lines, one data and clock, uh, powering ground, and it's addressable, but uh, it is slow only about 0.4 megabits per second and usually used for broad local communication, and, but unreliable over longer distances. Um, then there is also one wire connector, and it's most applicable for um, one wire data plus ground to power it themselves. The uh, device charges a small capacitor when the data line is not used, right? And it's similar to I2C, but lower data rate and longer distance. Um, popular devices are buttons, key fobs, weather sensors, and so on. For wireless, uh, there is a Wi-Fi. It's 2.4 gigahertz and uh, up to 50 megabytes per second. Um, it has power saving mechanism and it's about, yeah, so 150 uh, megabits per second to receive and transmit using 40 megahertz bandwidth and 72.2 uh, using 20 megahertz. Um, it also <coughs> can you. Uh, there is a PMOT uh, module <coughs> for external device, which is low cost, low power. It has 10 meters range and uh, implements high level protocols uh, like Zigbee, which is standard, and MiWi proprietary. Um, so, this is pretty much what is on the board, right? And um, you can have extensions, right? Th that is the core and um, extensions look so far that's what I have in my um, access um, standard um, free wire server motor connectors and um, connecting over GPIO um, there is uh, navigator right uh, gyro 
ACL2 um, HP3 I have no idea what is that and Morex that is what is on this board there and also it has GPS um, so it's about 3 meters uh, to the satellite positioning accuracy uh, which is I guess pretty good but um, yeah then uh, regarding the software that is running on this board. Uh, first of all, it runs Artems as a system. Uh, so it's uh, real-time executive from multiprocessor systems, real-time operating system, and it's free and open source. Um, you can plug it in as a library, and it supports uh, open standards APIs like POSIX. So uh, what it gives you, it's uh, Scalable on timer and timeout support, it's fine grain blocking, it processes emulated, uh, processes are emulated by threads, so um, it's kind of single process, but you have threads. <laughs> um, and it uses the free BSD networking stack. Um, we compile, uh, so it's Beam is compiled with Artem's headers and libraries. Um, the virtual machine can be started directly from the bootloader. And uh, operating system APIs that the VM needs are implemented by Artem's. And the general application would look the following. So there is a hardware, there is Artem's uh, as an operating system, and there is risk from time and LTP and on top it's running the application. It all runs in the beam. And um, so it runs Erlang applications and LinkedIn drivers and interface and interact with the crisp hardware and devices. Uh, you can use low level drivers for SPI and GPIO and you can use high level drivers for LEDs and DIP switches and PMOS. Um, what it gives, that is SPI driver in C, <laughs> I just show it to you here, I cannot say much about that, but wait a second, yeah, <coughs> let's just skip it. <laughs> Just a second, I'm afraid, yeah, that is, oh, okay, hmm. yeah, uh, I'm sorry for that, but apparently when the slides should be skipped, they are not skipped. Um, So let me just show you the demo that I've made. This is hopefully visible for you because I was expecting that there will be a little stage and then it can be visible better. So we have a nice bottle device here. Um, yeah, you may stand up um, if you don't see. But so the, it's already started. I started it before um, because it's, oh my God, okay. Let's see, uh -huh. because it boots quite long. It has 32 system and reading from SD card takes a while. And I could show it to you. It's very fascinating process, but quite boring to be honest. So, um, Me. Are you going to enter here as well? Mm -hmm. Let's see. Hmm. Mm. Yes, I will 
just mirror it for simplicity. Cool. So, we have it here, right? Just me. Um, So as you can see, I'm not connected to the port, even though it has a micro USB port so you can debug it directly from the computer, right? Connecting directly, or you can save yourself uh, a little bit of space. And uh, for example, if it's like the robot that should run around, running after the robot with the computer to debug it, it's uh, not comfortable. I did try it. Um, yeah, so it has a Wi-Fi model, so it registers to Wi-Fi, and here is the router that we will be using to talk to the port. Um, for that, there are several protocols, and there is uh, very good documentation on GitHub and great wiki, so I just went through that, set up myself, everything, and yeah, it worked. <laughs> Surprisingly, usually you have problems with documentation, but yeah, it just works. Uh, you need to, in order for this board to be accessible, you need to tell on which IP it can find your host. So it already knows about nodes that are in a system. And uh, then you also uh, set up a network uh, configuration and you tell the host name and um, which configuration file I should use for the Wi-Fi, right? And then once it's registered, you can find it on 100, and you can start shell, rebar shell uh, with a hooky and you give a name. Then you can see that once you ping it, it will know that there is a debug shell which essentially connects to that one. Um, and yeah, first of all, as you can see, those LEDs they are blinking, and let's see what we can do with that. Because I was preparing for the demo about the robot running around and I had to switch last time, uh, last minute to show you something. I wrote kind of a small blinker app so you can see how it works, right? And, um, oops. But I forgot to compile it. Okay, let's see. So, I forgot to compile it. So, either I can get the SD card, plug it in my computer, do the release of the project, uh, deploy it to the card, then put it back, wait for some time until it boots and probably forgetting something else there as well I don't know, well not a typo but something is wrong there um, I can just upload it over the Wi-Fi so I just do yeah, once again uh, it needs to know about the board right, okay, boom, it's here then we compile whatever project we have and we just do the net load uh, linker. Okay, that worked. And now, aha, uh -huh, it is here. Awesome, right? Pretty convenient to Venice, especially if you really need to debug it like from far away and it's already installed somewhere. Whew. It's saving. 
Let's see whether it's actually mm -hmm. goes well. What can we do else? Let's say we then la later realize that we need to have two colors, right? I just want to prove you that whatever I'm changing now, it was never on the board and it's getting magically transferred there, right? So let's say we say we flash the first one with a color one and we flash the second with a color two. Let's put it a second. Whoops. Sorry. Wait. We save it. Uh, we still have the old program there, right? We didn't upload anything. We didn't compile it yet. So. Let's do it. Compile. Okay. Upload. Okay. Uh -huh. It's already new there. So, let's see. Cool. To be honest, I like more happy colors. It's almost like a Christmas tree. <laughs> yeah. But okay. So later, as you can see, we have <coughs> on the board, there is extra sensor, right? So, and two motors with wheels. Um, <coughs> let's do experiment. I hope it will not fall off. So there is a another program that you can see here, <coughs> which is quite big, and essentially it's for Robert to run on the floor and try to follow me. But before I want to, before it runs, I want to check that I actually wrote everything correct, right? So you can debug from here and say forward. It's a bit scary, it's the first time on the stage, so... <laughs> okay. Huh? Good. So, and let's see what it turns right back. Good. And we need to go backward. <laughs> but not 50. <laughs> shy guys you know <laughs> okay <laughs> and like, huh? okay so um, another funny thing that I faced when I was thinking about this Robert trying to come up with something to play with that is that it wasn't consistent you know like I, I'm used to programming and you like okay you add five and it's five more but as you can see here, 
I said forward 20, and it was almost to the edge. But I said backwards 20, and it was like not really the same, right? <laughs> so it has physics to do with, right? And that is what it was not in my mind when I was <laughs> starting with that. It was funny because it was behaving really weird. I was reading the code twice. I was trying to understand what's wrong there. It's all correct. It, it was a wrong floor in my kitchen. It was just the wrong floor. I put it in the room, and it was fine. And I was like, okay, good. We can live with that together. And um, so in the end, let's see if it will work out. <laughs> shy of you guys. <laughs> it was way more energetic at my home. Okay, now we found a table. That is a problem. It cannot distinguish between me and a table. That is the next iteration for the problem, you know? So it can kind of see, I don't know. Whoa. Hmm. It's really nervous. <laughs> it's cool. It makes we feel not alone to that. <laughs> because, you know, like, programs are super predictable, right? This one, no. <laughs> like, it has its own perks. It has a person personality. Okay. Let's see who it will find now. Um, what else is good? Because, uh, as you can see here, we registered this module as a robot. Right? And we also... I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, we also listen to messages that uh, this process can receive. So let's try to stop him. Mm -hmm. It is unstoppable now. Definitely has its own personality, you know? It was stopping at home. <laughs> you made you forget the thoughts at the end? Right. No. Oh, yes. True. Dude. People are looking. <laughs> Come on. Okay. Let's try again. Stop. It was there. actually uh, trying to understand why it was behaving really on my kitchen floor, right? So it, it was very vocal about what it's doing, what it sees. Um, then later I realized that when I'm looking at him, I cannot look at my console, right? I cannot read the messages and think of them. Um, my eyes are not that flexible. So I decided that you can also introduce new debugging with LEDs. And what it does. 
So when it finds it, it switches um, green to green and magenta, two of blinkers, which you can see now. And uh, when it loops further and uh, checks whether the object is still there, the one that needs to be followed, um, but not find it, it switches one light to red, means that, like, how I perceive it, I lost you. Like, if it blinks red, it lost me. And then, to understand which direction it goes, uh, yeah, it was here, the turning. So if it turns right, it blinks the second LED yellow, but if it turns left, it blinks the second LED blue. Right, so it's kind of a color coding debugging, which was also quite funny. Because you may sound in the end as a crazy person because you can understand what it talks to you. And then it's like, oh yeah, it just goes, I oh, yeah, didn't start the problem. Um, you still here? Let's see. Essentially now to understand on which part of the loop it is, I don't need to look at the, at the console, but I can just look at the LEDs and see that it still cannot find me, it's still red, but now blue, so it turns left, it goes in a turn to left, then once it finishes uh, the blue scope, I guess about now, there is still a lot to work on this program. Uh, yeah, now it switches to yellow, so it will go to the right. Okay, so it's still in the loop. Let's see. Aha. Uh -huh. It found me, and it starts blinking both of the LEDs. And uh, once again, magenta and green, right? And here, did you break? Huh. Kids. Oh yeah, true. I didn't run the program, I just ran the search. So I found it and it was good. Um, yeah. So I would say that's pretty much it. I guess I could take your interest and let me finish with the slides. So what the guys are working on. They work on a project that is uh, called Smart Home. Then they also trying to um, be, wait a second, I need my notes. Um, So um, they want to develop a generic library that can be included in the projects and then you have an easier way to actually develop your applications without modifying something in there. Um, then they want to implement uh, persistence. So if, as I uploaded the new compiled modules, they were only in the memory. They were not saved on the flashcard that was on the board. Right? So every time I rebooted it, it was gone. So it would be nice to also have it persisted. Um, they want to introduce obviously more widgets and um, they in February shipped the software 1.1 and they started shipment uh, of these boards. So it's pretty fresh available to the market. And um, yeah, it's available with the Erlang 20.2 
uh, with all basic drivers for um, modules and yeah, Wi-Fi. They got a better Wi-Fi on the board compared to the very first version. And what else? Um, they want to build even more drivers. They want to pre-build um, OTP and cross tool chain. Oh, tool chain was long. Uh, they have their own tool chain, which took me a really long time to compile, but gladly you need to compile it only once if you're not changing anything in that direction. But it was still like, yeah, would be nice if it would be already pre built. And um, I don't know what they want to fix in Erlang distribution, but probably there is something to fix. Uh, this is where you can read more about the board and about the team as well. Um, there you have an RC channel, they have Slack uh, channel as well, um, GitHub, please go read, there is great wiki. Um, and if you want to get one of those boards, use 20% discount code, uh, it's great. And if you really like this cute little shark, I have stickers. Please come forward afterwards and pick up yours. So thank you guys. <laughs> I'm really sorry, but I think still performance was pretty good from this little baby. Yes, thank you. We have plenty of time for questions, so speak up if you have any. I'm interested in the extension goals in, in, into the drivers. Are they implemented also in Airbus, or yes. are they similar to the um, SPI driver you showed, uh, mostly implemented in C and then only uh, uh, interfaces? So as far as I understood, you can also write them in Erlang. And that is the main reason, because if you're an Erlang programmer, switching to C not pretty cool, I would say. I mean, it's an extra complexity that you have. Right, so guys, um, I'm very convinced that you can write it in an airline. More questions? Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> um, so, Raspberry Pi runs Linux, right? It's like full-blown system that you have there. You cannot really do low-level programming there, and as far as I remember, they pretty much don't have extensions to the board. What do you mean by you can do any low-level programming by? Uh, do they have like a possibility to plug the same uh, Devices, remotes, yeah? No, probably not the same, but in some devices. Um, some devices. Here you have more low level devices that you can interact yourself, right? That you can write drivers yourself as well and communication. So it's not that, like, Raspberry Pi is a full blown, it's really heavy, right? Like, th to run Linux, um, it's quite a heavy system. But you should compare it in power consumption, for example, in uh, what price or what? <laughs> okay. Um, let me compare. Power consumption definitely lower on this board, just because it runs less components, right? Um, I tell you. <laughs> um, for particular specifications, uh, I guess you can address to the website and uh, to write directly to the guys as well. Um, for the rest, price-wise, it's more expensive. But because it's used rather for prototyping than for production. So what you would do, you would get this board, plug in all the devices or uh, PMOs that you want, write a program, and then once you settle down with the code base and everything else, 
you just write to some factory and say like I need to board with this and this specification and with this system already fused into the uh, board itself so and then you must produce those boards like if you want to really go into production and this is rather a prototyping board where you have great flexibility there are two more questions uh, yes or uh, is there any sound or Good question. I don't know. Okay. I don't know. But even if there is none, maybe uh, guys, I, I will definitely transfer it to guys. And because I guess that, uh, or what I like with this compared to Raspberry Pi is, I guess that this one can you can make much lower latency programs than you could with a Linux. True, but it's still a soft real time system. Okay. But guys are working towards making it hard real time system. Mm -hmm. That is their like ultimate aim and ultimate goal. Good. There was one question here in the front. Can you say something about why Perlang is well suited for this? I I don't know nothing about Perlang. <laughs> Who knows about Erlang? Cool. Um, what's cool about Erlang? Never using the robot. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, why, why, why is it uh, why is it well suited for this type of thing? I mean, um, first of all, uh, Erlang is a functional language, right? Um, you have how it's called? Oh, oh my god! Yeah. yeah. You have like primitives for heat buffers and stuff, so you could like it's made for doing this but with telephony, so it's like super, super good on like ports and stuff. On communication. And then um, like this uh, model where you get the events in, it's very convenient to program. <coughs> this program would run in the robot, it would be very complicated in an Arduino program, I would say. Much Thank you. Yeah. And also, yeah, because it can communicate uh, between processes, so you can have a uh, network and communicating within network within require, uh, without requiring access to internet, right? So you can have your, I don't know, smart home fully separated from the global network. Talking about privacy again. Yeah? yeah. Actually, another answer to the question before. Awesome. In Erlang, you can have those actors and you have a supervision tree so that uh, every part of your <coughs> system that you're developing is uh, somehow supervised. Crashes. There's some other part, uh, some supervisor part that can actually restart this thing that crashed. So, um, like thing in an um, environment uh, where something's not running on your computer, but uh, you know, uh, on the wall somewhere where I can't reach it. So it's maybe nice if things restart themselves. Yeah, so it's uh, self healing. But there are threads. Hmm? But there are threads. Yes, uh, so it's how many threads can you run on that board? Do you know? Don't know. Sorry. One more question. Yes. Could I run something different on this board, or is it? If I say I found a way to run Haskell on it, and I have a question about the hardware, uh, will the guys producing the hardware say uh, we don't support that? Or I don't know. It's a very good question, and I can recommend to ask them directly. Or ask differently. Um, is the board um, sold by the same people uh, producing the early environment? Yes. Okay. Good. So, thank you again. Thank you, guys.